The backyard was bathed with an eerie orange light as the sun set in the sky. The air was still and humid, with small swarms of mosquitoes buzzing around it in the sunlight. Beside the light buzzing from the swarms of bugs and the gentle early summer breeze, it was quiet. But as the sound the second crawled by, a new noise split the air. Loud faced pace stomping. It seemed to come from inside the large house that sat tall over the backyard, the windows even shaking a bit at the force of the noise. Suddenly, the back door burst open with a force, slamming into the adjacent wall so hard that it put a rather large dent in it. Woo! Freedom! Tyro nearly tripped and fell face first into the soft green grass of the yard as the rest of the children leaped out of the back door. One, a blue penguin, fell face first into the ground. Ah! Hey, watch it! The penguin shouted, spitting out a clump of dirt and grass. The group of kids all ran to a small picnic table near the center of the yard, giggling and shouting at each other joyfully. Finally, after 180 days of endless torture and homework, we're finally free! Tyrone gleefully shouted, laying his head on the table. Thank God, I thought we'd never get out of that place. I forgot what it felt like to actually relax. One of the other kids, a purple kangaroo wearing a blue shirt with yellow stripes on it and long brown cargo pants. Pfft, tell me about it. I thought my butt was going to go numb after sitting on those freakishly small desks. Another kid, a yellow hippo, replied. You think that's bad, dude? I somehow got stuck in one of those desks and you know how skinny I am. The kangaroo replied again. Austin, pretty much anyone that doesn't look like a twig can, can and will get stuck in those desks. Even Warren managed to get stuck in this desk, and he's a freaking otter! Tyrone snapped back. Everyone giggled. Can you imagine him just walking through the halls with a desk stuck to his butt? Another kid replied, a pink ladybug wearing a bright red tank top and shorts. Oh dear god, Uniqua, you're giving me flashbacks just talking about it! The penguin said again. Just before everyone could tease him, the door opened again. A tall female moose stood in the door with a timid smile on her face. Kids, be sure to be inside by sundown. I'm, I'm baking cookies anyway, and they're just calling all your names. Every kid in the table stared at her in awe, some even drooling at the mere mention of her cookies. Well, I'll leave you all be. You have fun in your little adventures, especially you, Tyrone. The motherly moose cooed, winking at Tyrone, who in turn groaned in embarrassment. Haha, <laughs> mama's boy. Austin called out teasingly, joined by the rest of the gang, who all began to laugh hysterically. Oh, shut up, you guys. It's not that funny. The orange moose snapped. The group of four went quiet, but that didn't stop them from snickering. All right, let's see who we have today. Tyrone began. Austin? Right here, yo. Austin quipped. All right, Tasha? Gotcha. Pablo? Yo. Uniqua? Here I am. Here I stay. Tyrone grinned. Everyone was there. Alrighty then, everyone's here. Good. Everyone nodded, and they sat down on the grass, all staring at the moose. So, what adventure are we going to have this time? Uniqua asked. Well, I have several ideas. Good ones, too. Well, let's hear it. Well, I was thinking about having a short of a Lost Temple exploration adventure. E you know, kind of like Indiana Jones. Wait, nah. That would require one person. Scratch that. My other idea was a secret agent thing, where there's of course a mustache twirling villain that stole a diamond from a bank and the spies are trying to steal it back. Everyone seemed to agree on this idea. But hold up, I got one more. For my last idea, I thought of a good old fashioned wizard battle. Now everyone was excited. A wizard battle? Ooh, I like the sound of that one, Paulo cheered. When was the last time we did something like that? Third grade or something? Yeah, probably, Tyron quipped back. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's get the show on the road. Everyone cheered, but before they could run inside and grab their costumes, a voice came from the s over the tall fence. It was a bit deeper and older sounding. Hey! Everyone stopped and looked into the direction of the voice. As they watched, someone began climbing the fence. Soon his face came into view. He had brown fur, two large ears, and a long, dark hair that draped over one of his light bluish-green eyes. Oh, hey, Caleb! Austin said, strolling over to the fence. Ayo, hey, also you can just call me Cyan, the kangaroo replied, grinning a bit. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that, man. People forget to give you a nickname, Austin jeered, smirking. Eh, it doesn't really matter, Cyan replied, before turning his gaze to the group. 
So, what you guys up to? We're just about to have the mother of all wizard battles, Tyrone cheered, making the intimidating face and jumping out of the seam, out to seem dramatic. Oh, really? Yeah, it's gonna be epic, Pablo jeered. Dang, sounds fun, guys, Cyan replied. Well, I gotta go now. I got a lot of drawing and work and everything to do. But before he could climb down the fence, Tyrone stopped him. Hey, dude, you don't have to leave, man. Cyan narrowed his eyes at Tyrone. Er, why? Every time you come outside, you see us playing around. You look kind of... sad. The kangaroo just stared, a bit confused at first. What? I... I don't... What's up? Is something bothering you? Cyan then finally spoke up. Well, I'll be honest. Ever since you guys moved into the neighborhood, I occasionally saw you having those little adventures in your backyard. Even if I was literally two grades above you, I sort of wanted to join you guys. Tyrone grinned a rather annoyed look on, on hearing this. Dude, I'm practically a ninth grader now, and you're a sophomore. It doesn't really matter what grade you're in, unless you're a senior or something, then that'd be a little bit weird. The kangaroo laughed at that. Yeah, true, but I'm still a little bit old to be playing pretend like that. Well, that's alright then. You can be our narrator or announcer or something. Tyrone explained, looking back at the now empty yard. Narrator? Yeah, like you could announce who's winning or something similar. Huh, thanks man, I'd really appreciate that. Yeah, dude, well, I'll be back, gotta change. And with that, he ran back inside the house and slammed the door shut. Cyan stayed on the spot in the fence, eager, to the, e eager for the others to get outside to help lead them on yet another one of their backyard adventures. After a minute or two, the rest of the gang came outside. Pablo wore a large wizard hat and a starry cape with a small brown tunic underneath. Tasha and Uniqua were wearing a witch's outfit with scraggly wands made from gnarled sticks. Austin looked like a druid with a long black cloak flowing behind him and with a hood that covered his face. And finally, Tyrone came out. He wore a fake beard, a wizard hat similar to Pablo's with a large red cape. He stood into the large stump that sat near the edge of the yard and attempted to speak in a booming voice. I am Arzoth! I am the master wizard of this land, protector of all magic and light! Cyan then noticed the two witches that were Tasha and Uniqua at the corner of the yard, along with Austin in his rather intimidating druid garb. But, Cayenne said, as the peaceful reign of Arzoth draws on, evil rises. Both witches cackled evilly as Austin sat silently. And so, the wizard, the war of the wizards begin. The adventure was glorious. Wizard and witches ran left and right, pretending to zap each other with all sorts of crazy spells. Some were transformed into frogs, others were simply knocked out or blasted to kingdom come. Various shouts, laughs, chants, and screams filled the air as the sun set in the sky. The battle eventually continued after the moon rose in. Tyrone and Pablo stood victorious on the stump as Tasha, Uniqua, and Austin lay defeated at their feet. Their wands snapped in two. The sky was now dark with stars dotting the sky. And thus, Arzoth and his faithful companion have restored balance to the land, and no evil shall dare ever stand in their way again, Cyan shouted. As soon as the older kangaroo finished his sentence, both Pablo and Tyrone collapsed from exhaustion. Whew, my god, that was fun. Paulo wheezed, absolutely tuckered out. Oh yeah, Jesus, that was intense though. Everyone began to shakily get up to their feet, albeit a bit shaky. Yee, you guys really played hard, don't, didn't ya? Cyan joked at, at, jokingly asked, his voice a bit hoarse from yelling occasionally. That's when the door opened. Tyrone's mother stepped out with a giant tray of at least two dozen chocolate chip cookies. Come back inside, the cookies are done. Everyone's jaw dropped at the sight of the cookies she was holding. See you, Kay! Tyrone shouted as everyone waved at him and sprinted inside, eager to chow down on some of the cookies. Cyan just smirked and hopped down from his spot in the fence. By now, everyone with the exception was Pablo was already inside the house, driven by their intense hunger for the delectable cooked chocolate chip treats. Pablo was just entering the door when he turned around to look back at the darkened yard. Like the responsible kid that he was, he was checking to see if they had left any toys out in the yard, and he scanned the yard quickly, searching for anything that needed to be brought back inside. Fortunately, there was nothing, but before he could turn around and go inside, something caught his attention. He glanced up at the starry sky to see what had caught his gaze, and was greeted to an extraordinary sight. 
A large bright purple star sat in the sky with a large tail behind it that resembled a comet. Whoa! Pablo gasped as he watched the comet-like objects soar across the night sky. Pablo then turned around and shouted into the house, Hey guys, you gotta see this! Nobody responded. Everyone was too busy chowing down on the cookies. Guys? Pablo called again. Still no response. Eh, you're lost. By the time he looked back, the shooting star had already disappeared over the treetops. Pablo let out a, ah, dang it. With that, Pablo turned and went inside of the house. He strolled through the back door and came into the kitchen where everyone was sitting. Tyron then piped up upon seeing him. What were you wanting? What, what did you want, Pablo? Is something wrong? Pablo shook his head furiously. You guys missed it. I just saw a shooting star. Everyone stopped what they were doing upon hearing those words. Shooting star? Tasha repeated, staring at him in disbelief. Yeah, it just went over the tree line. Everyone groaned in disappointment. Dang it, we couldn't keep our hunger under control for one second. Tasha slammed her head on the table, groaning in anger while everyone just laughed. Man, that would have been cool to see. I've never seen one before. What did it look like? Austin asked, his eyes wide with wonder. Oh, it was something, all right. It had this cool purple hue to it, and its tail nearly stretched across the sky. The four listened to his description, their faces filled with expressions of awe and wonder. Dang, that sounds otherworldly, Uniqua said. Literally, Tasha retorted, smirking. Yeah, it was cool. I hope to get to see another one. Then he smelled the cookies. Oh, by the way, did you save any cookies for me? Oh yeah, there are four on the tray for you, Tyrone stated, glancing at the small metal tray on the stove. Okay, thanks, Pablo said, grabbing a cookie off the tray. As the night dragged on, they ate the cookies, played some video games and board games, and told scary and strange stories. Soon as it was around 10.30, and they were watching a movie, Austin and Tasha were already asleep, while Tyrone, Uniqua, and Pablo were getting close to falling asleep. Then Tyrone groggily got up from his sleeping bag and trudged towards the television. Alright, I'm gonna go on ahead and hit the hay. Yeah, same here, Pablo replied, with Uniqua nodding as well. Go ahead and turn off the TV, the movie was boring anyway. Tyron nodded and turned the TV off. Then he trudged back into the sleeping bag and fell face first into his bed. Well, I had a fun day, you guys, Tyron said, his speech muffled from talking into his pillow. Same here, dude. <sighs> Hopefully we can do it again tomorrow, Pablo mumbled, resting his head against the sleeping bag pillow. Uniqua didn't answer as she had already went comatose, snoring louder than the other two that were asleep. Tyron snickered a bit before letting his head fall to the pillow. Good night, you guys. Good night, Tyrone, Pablo mumbled back. Maybe tomorrow night we can try and spot another shooting star. Yeah, that sounds good, Tyrone replied before he began to drift off. Pablo also soon fell asleep as the room went silent. The moonlight shined into the room through the window, hitting the back of Pablo's head and spreading across the floor a bit, casting the room in a bluish-white hue. That was until the moonlight was replaced with another light. It shined a bit brighter than the moon and moved across the wall and floor like a car's yellowish headlights. Only it was purple instead of yellow.